Never fear. Only trust and obey. I'm going to say a little bit about that title in a second. But let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 3. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. And I perceive that I may read through the whole chapter. I offer no apology. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoners of Jesus Christ for you, Gentile, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you, word. The dispensation of the grace of God that is given to Paul for our sake, for the sake of the church. Important. How that by revelation he made unto me what? The mystery. As I wrote afore in few words. The grace of God. The mystery. Understand that this is given to Paul, is given to John, is given to Peter for our sake. The grace, the mystery of the grace of God. Verse 5, which in other ages has not been made known unto the Son of Man as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow hearers of the, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power, Unto me, who am less than the, and, than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentile world the unsearchable riches of Christ. That is grace. You see, he was talking about the grace of God that has been given towards us. And he called it the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ, and this is very, very important. Let's look at that word unsearchable. What does it mean? What does it mean, unsearchable? That word unsearchable means that it cannot be comprehended, it cannot be searched out. <laughs> One translation here says untraceable. You can't track it. Kasho <laughs> blakaya. It's past finding out. You can't track these riches. It's unsearchable. It's untraceable. Is past finding out. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. The unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make all men see. Uh -huh. So it was given to Paul, was given to John, all the apostles, the prophets, the unsearchable riches of Christ, but there's something else. We have to see. It. God gave it, but we have to see it. But by the same Holy Spirit by which it is given, by that same Holy Spirit, we have to see it. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. You, you see that word fellowship. Fellowship means participation. It's talking about the, the grace of God, the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's talking about the, this mystery. And he said, look, the, the idea is that God wants you to have a fellowship, a part, a participation in this grace, in this fellowship, in this unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So this mystery we are talking about has been cooked even before the foundation of the world. You are part of something that is enduring. It's not flaky. It's not a new craziness it was it started in god this mystery this riches the source and the origin is god this what you are involved with is eternal it started from eternity past and is going into eternity future what you are involved with is not a vogue it's not you know, it's not something that comes in vogue and out of vogue. We are talking about something that has a foundation. We are talking about something that endures forever. Started in God even before the foundation of the world. It has been hidden in God. Hallelujah. Wow. That is what we are, that's what it's about. And when you touch this, something happens. But let's keep going. Verse 10. Let's read verse 9 again. And to make all men see... And by the way, the men there, we are the ones that put it there, just to make all see. So it's not just <laughs> to make all see, men and women. We put the men there so we can remove it. <laughs> hey, man, somebody said, how did you know that? It's because in my, in my Bible, we put it in Italy. That means we put it there. To make all men see 
what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ verse 10 to the intent now listen to the intent now now when we begin listen when we begin to fellowship when we begin to participate in this mystery when we begin to experience this unsearchable riches of Christ, when it is not something we hear about, talk about, when it is something that we are participating in and enjoying and experiencing, the Bible says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Listen to me, that when you start participating in this mystery and unsearchable riches of Christ, the Bible says you will manifest wisdom. To the intent that now unto principalities of power in heavenly places might be made known by the church. In other words, God wants to show the devil pepper through you. We are talking about stewardship. God has brought us in to participate of something that is alive. Something that is of God. Something that have origin from eternity past. You see, many people will kill themselves because they want to be part of something that fades. I always watch, you know, all these cheerleaders when people go into the uni. You know, people want to join the, the people that are making the wave. Listen to me. I want you to understand that what you are part of. You see, everybody wants to join something that will make a difference. Everybody wants to join some to be part of something that is real, that is powerful, that is making a difference. What I'm telling you is that Christianity is not a religion. You are not joining a religion. You are joining the greatest move, the greatest plan, the greatest purpose, the greatest manifestation in the world. We are joining something that God is doing. And that when we begin to allow that to flow through us, the Bible says that we'll begin to manifest wisdom, the wisdom of God. You see, oftentimes, most of us pray for power. But yes, God talks about power, rightly so. But God always talks about wisdom first. The wisdom of God. Because it is in the wisdom of God that we operate the power of God. Maybe this is the reason why I have not been, God has not been able to commit his power into my hand because I lack wisdom. Wisdom. Listen, when you study the scripture, the Bible says that strong men belong to those who by reason of use have their senses exercised that they might discern between good and evil. When you study the scripture, the first thing that happens to you that it changes you. You become like Christ. The Bible says that we can grow into Christ in all things. The first sign of maturity is not how, how, how far you shout. It is how much you change. The you. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not, not, not yet I, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. It is me. Growing into Christ in all things. The Bible says that they took note of Paul, I mean of Peter. He said they took note of, of them because they have been with Jesus. Because they are talking like Jesus. They are acting like him. Wisdom. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he proposed. So this wisdom, this manifestation is not to panther to our desire, our ego, but it's according to the purpose of God. So the wisdom, the end purpose of God's wisdom, the end purpose of God's wisdom is God's purpose. Okay, maybe we better change that. The purpose of God's wisdom is to fulfill the purpose. Okay, I'm stuck now. <laughs> the English is clashing. <laughs> the reason for God's wisdom is to fulfill God's purpose. I think that works. Because <laughs> not oh God. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. The reason why God has called us, stewardship. Stewardship. The reason why God has called us is to fulfill God's purpose. And you know what? That's the problem. All right. <laughs> so, so God has called us and deposited all this in us and said, go and show them. You think the principalities and powers will fold their hand 
and allow you to get away with it. Is somebody listening to me? And that is why we're talking about fear not, trust, and only obey. Because you need to understand that still worship automatically brings you into a place of worship. And this is very, very important for us to actually understand. That our still worship ultimately brought us into a place of conflict. The Lord Jesus said, I'm sending you out as sheep in the middle of wolves. I said, but God, why do you want to do that? But that is the, that is the nature of our still worship. Listen to me. As a steward, you have chosen side. God has deposited something inside of you. We've mentioned it. The unsearchable riches of Christ, the mystery of God, and all these things we've mentioned about, and you're going to manifest the wisdom of God to the principalities and powers. Those principalities and powers, they don't just roll over. They are going to challenge you. They are going to try to intimidate you. They are going to try and test you. Is somebody listening to me? So your stewardship will ultimately bring you into worship. Hallelujah. You know, many of us like stewards in, in the plane. They're always very beautiful ladies. I've seen maybe one or two men, but we always like the ladies. They are so, actually so beautiful and handsome. <laughs> Women can be handsome too, okay? Very beautiful. You know, you know the way they stand up and they do all that, do all that. But there's, there's some instruction they give us, we just take it for granted. They said in, in place when there is an emergency, they said, look on the ground. How many of us start crying when they tell us that? Nobody. In fact, we get so used to it, we don't even listen. So they tell you that when there is an emergency, you understand that the emergency we are talking about, you are in the air. It's not that you are going to take off and, and go through the door. So they said, when there's an emergency, follow the, and they will show you the line. And they said, you know, the oxygen mask will, will come down. Please put your own oxygen on first before you push. And they will say, you do that, you crush it. Nobody listen. We just take it for granted. Because I think if we listen, all of us will start praying and say, God, let's pray that this part of this instruction <laughs> will not be needed. <laughs> but I'm going somewhere. You know, stewards are cool because they are doing all those things. What about a steward in a plane that is going down? What about a steward in a plane that is facing challenges? Do you understand that their training is not just to entertain you? That there are periods and there are times when planes do face a great challenge. And that the steward, part of the work of a steward is to minister to you. But the steward standing in front of you actually have a connection to the captain. The steward is there to carry out the instruction of the captain. There's a captain in that plane. And the steward, when things go wrong, the steward doesn't rush into the cockpit and say, Captain, are you okay? Can I come and, no. Your job is to keep the people comfortable. Someone listening to me. That is part of your training. Part of your training is to fear not, to trust the captain, and to obey the instruction. But listen to me, when things are tough, when things are challenging, you know what happened? At that point, your training will come out. This is the reason why you've been trained over and over and over again. Okay? Our, our, our forces, armed forces, they train over and over and over again. Okay, as a doctor, they train you for when things go wrong. You may never use it. But you've been trained over and over and over and over and over and over and over again so that if things do go wrong, you are ready. That is not the thing to carry the manual. If it is not part of you, it is not going to be you. I'm talking about stewardship. Fear not. Trust and obey. And that is why Paul was writing. He said that they may, they may know what is the fellowship. Not the associationship. Not his togetherness-ship. It's you and I understanding this truth. So the steward at that point is there. 
I mean, you understand that if this plane goes down, the steward also will die. You know, it, it reminds me, how many of you watched the Titanic? You know, not the real Titanic, nobody was there, but the film. <laughs> there's, there's always a scene in that film that touched me. If you watched it very closely, towards the end when the, the other half of the ship that sank last, towards the end, when everybody now knew that they cannot be saved, it was clear. Because number one, all the rescue boats were gone. Number two, if you jump into the sea, it doesn't matter. You're going to die. Because the, this, this water was so cold, it was freezing cold. You remember Jack at the end of the day, Jack was actually frozen. All right? The water was so cold that even if you jump out of the sinking ship into the water, you're going to froze. So towards the end, there were these musicians. OK, there was this uh, minister who was praying, and everybody was hanging on him. But there were also this musician that was praying, nearer, my God to thee, nearer to thee. You understand that they were also going to die, but they were stewards. And they started playing. And they were giving people something to be happy about in the last hour of their life. Whether that happened on the real Titanic, I don't know. So it came to a point. They, they, <clears throat> they were playing that song, and everybody was really receiving some encouragement. Wife and husband were holding themselves together. Family were huddling together because they know this is the last time they're going to live. So after some time, this musician broke. And they, they greeted each other and said, well, that is it. It's time to die. So a couple of them were leaving. But one of them just came back and started playing again. And the rest came back. And they were playing that song, The Sheep Sing. I'm talking about stewards of the manifold wisdom of God. Let me ask you one question. What will it take for you to leave your post? Tell me. What, did, what does the devil have to dangle in front of you to give up? In front of me. What? Your friend that already has one wife, your friend that already has children when you don't have any, is that it? Is that what it takes? Is that what it's going to take for you to say, I'm not going to come to church again because you lose your job? Is that it? Is that it? Is that what it's going to take from you? Tell me. We all think that we have reason. You know, in the Lord, is this children, is this wife, is this husband? You think that is a reason? Is you, you, you think you will give that reason to God, that this is what took away from me, this manifold, unsearchable riches of Christ? You think that's a reason? Let me tell you something, and I've said it here before. By the time you say, Lord, is these two children that you gave me that disturb me, somebody will come to God with ten children, and they serve God. You say, Lord, is this husband that beat me? Somebody will come with a more terrible husband than you, a more terrible wife than you, and they serve God. You know, Jesus said it. He was, he was talking to, he said, look, Sodom and Gomorrah will rise up in the day of judgment. They will condemn this generation. He said, because if the things that was done in you was done in them, they will have repented. What are you saying? Don't you understand what we are dealing with? You are a steward. And let me tell you something. As a steward, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, there's, 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 there's a warfare, there's a hardship. Because, because it's a privilege. But the enemy will want to attack you. And you must trust in him that has called you. You must trust in him. That he that has begun a good thing in you, he will finish it. That which has committed unto you, our job is to make sure that we are obedient. And, and, and Pastor Miwa quoted this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In fact, let's, let's, let's read that because I have to stop now. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, not second. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 1. He said, let a man so account of us. Now, this was what I preached in, 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 in Love Bro last week. In fact, over this week, I'm going to be in a couple of our churches Next week, by the grace of God, I think I'm in Derby and after that in Birmingham. And I'm just talking about the hallmarks of a good steward. 
So last week at Lovebro, we were talking about faithfulness. Today we are talking about trust and obedience. But this scripture says, let a man so account of us, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ and steward of what? Of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required. You know what that word require means? It is essential. It's an essential requirement. It's an indispensable cardinal virtue, the main and leading expectation. It is required of a steward to be faithful. And by the way, you can put in front of that faithful unto death. The Bible says that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, that's where we want to stop. The Bible says, and they love not their life unto death. Why will you do that? Why will you do that? It's because, listen to me, it's because the master actually gave his life to give you that treasure that you carry. That treasure that you carry was worth dying for. So it is worth living for and it's worth dying for. Stand on your feet, please. And when you go through the scripture, and you will see over and over again men and women that, that were steward. Joseph, he was a steward of the grace of God, but there was challenge, and he ended up in prison. But God was there. God was with him. The three Hebrew children, they were steward of God's grace. They ended up in the fire, but the fourth man was there. Hallelujah. Daniel, he was a steward of the grace of God, of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Even in the Old Testament, because what they experience in the Old Testament is actually a, a, a withdrawing on the, of the grace of God in Christ Jesus. He ended up in the lion's den, but Jesus was there. What about Stephen? Stephen was a steward of the grace of God, but he died. But he died a glorious death. Amen. The Bible says that when Stephen was dying, he saw the heaven open, and he saw Jesus sitting on the right hand of God. No, he didn't see Jesus sitting. He saw Jesus, what? Standing. Jesus standing for a man. And I want to tell you this. In whatever way that God has called, in whatever way that God has committed to you to be a steward, God will give you the grace to serve him. Oftentimes the problem is that we don't trust God enough. We want God to do things in a certain way. You trust God. Leave the outcome to him. Sometimes God saves you from the situation. Sometimes God saves you through the situation. Sometimes God saves you at the other side of the situation. He is God. We don't always always understand why God does things the way he does it. But what I want you to know is that you are part of something that is precious. It's so precious that is what dying for. How many of you will give your life for your children if that will mean that their life will be saved? I'll round up with this. There's a film that was done by these uh, Kendrick brothers. I think it's called Courageous or something. The story of these um, armies. Anyway, one of the way, they, the way they opened up that film is that there was a man, I think I've told you the story here, that was in, in, uh, he was in a petrol station buying fuel. Okay, as he was buying the fuel, A thief jumped into his car and drove up. And then he ran after the car. He was actually a policeman. Obviously, in the film, we didn't know he was a policeman until later. He ran. He really ran after the car and grabbed the car and was holding on. People were shouting, leave the car alone. Don't kill yourself. It's a car. It's a car. Leave it alone. Finally, the thief decided, there were two of them. The thief decided that this guy is crazy. He's going to kill himself because of a car. So the thief stopped. They left his car and they ran. Immediately they stopped, he opened the door. Do you know what was at the back of the door of the car? It was his baby. So the reason why he was ready to risk his life was because of the treasure that was in the car. If you understand the treasure that you have, remember I'm not saying the treasure that you carry. If you understand the treasure that you are, you won't give it up that easily. Father, we give you praise.